One of the biggest benefits I've received from living a life with less has been that I've been able to create more. I know it sounds ironic, so hear me out. Eight years ago, just after graduating college, I decided to become a minimalist. It forced me to ask some important questions about the life I was pursuing and eventually led me to redefine my idea of success. Instead of the house tucked behind the white picket fence, I imagined a life where I had enough. I had work that was fulfilling and relationships that fueled me. Sometimes I think people get caught up in the rat race because it's just an easier target to aim for. An intentional life requires a bit more thought and it's not as easy to find B-roll for. Here's the thing about minimalism. A lot of people think that once you become a minimalist, you no longer have ambition. They picture someone sitting quietly in their home, happy to watch the world pass them by. But that version didn't really sit with me. Even if I had millions of dollars and all my bills paid until the end of time, I'd still be driven to create. So for me, I quickly realized that I could apply some of these minimalist principles that worked really well for my personal life to help me with my creative work. Here's how minimalism has made me more productive. Setting priorities. When you identify what you really want to create, say to direct a documentary or write your first book, you need to drop every non-essential work task that doesn't support that. How many phone calls, meetings, or lunch dates are distracting you from achieving your goal? Someone wants to have coffee to pick your brain. Sorry. Your friends want to go out drinking on a Thursday night. Not this time. You need the discipline to say no so that you can put everything you have into the few things you say yes to. Eliminating distractions. Have you ever opened up your web browser to search for something real quick and then all of a sudden two hours have gone by and you're on your 15th time of watching that Karma's a Bitch video? Karma's a bitch. The same tools that allow us to create our work are also booby-trapped with infinite distractions. For half the population, it's literally a booby trap. Instagram, Twitter, even email. I found that I couldn't use these in moderation since I compulsively check them. So I cut out the distraction. I schedule all emails and social media for a small block during my workday. And sometimes I fall back into my old habits. But when I'm doing my best work or I'm closing in on a deadline, I will be vigilant about this practice. Feeling productive and being productive are two completely different things. Staying organized. One of the first benefits people find from clearing away their physical clutter is they remove friction from their lives. Less cleaning, less distractions, less things to bump into. I applied that same approach to organize my digital files online. When I created a system for editing and organizing my files, each project had a similar workflow. I was able to fall back into these pathways that I'd previously paved. At the time of making this video, I've filmed and edited over 50 podcast episodes. Each one has an almost identical structure of folders, tags, and deliverables. Create a process that can carry you through all your work. Adjust when necessary, but don't reinvent your approach for each project. Focusing on the essentials. I once had a job interview with College Humor back when I was still a junior at Temple University. I had impressed them enough with my reel and some of the videos that I made that they decided to bring me in. This is a photo of my actual trip up to New York from Philadelphia. I bought the t-shirt and tie from a thrift store the day before. Anyway, as a part of the interview, they had me edit a project of theirs to see what I could do in 30 to 45 minutes. And I completely fucked it up. I spent all my time tinkering away with the audio and the sound effects and the transitions, completely ignoring the story. And here's the lesson. You gotta save the polish for the very end. Imagine writing a book chapter by chapter, making each sentence perfect. But then three chapters in, you decide to take the story in an entirely different direction. Now you've wasted all your time perfecting things up front when you could have saved it for the very end. Focus on the essentials first. Finding passion. I only chose to work with clients and projects that I was truly passionate about. When you find work that you love, it's still work. But getting started takes just a little bit less effort. Procrastination is rare, and I find myself naturally drawn to create, rather than forcing myself to sit down to just knock out another video. 
If you find yourself constantly complaining about the work you're doing, pissed off or annoyed at the clients you've got or your boss, if you hate your job, make a change. Productivity isn't about cramming as much work as you can into one day. You'll burn yourself out before you ever develop a routine. True productivity is about creating a sustainable and balanced life that you can keep up every day. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out my podcast, The Ground Up Show. It covers the intersection of these two ideas, minimalism and creativity. I interview some amazing guests about their stories, how they made things happen, and practical lessons for building something for yourself. Get it at groundupshow.com.